So that's a sense of sanctuary, a safe place, which nothing can touch it. The exercise is very simple. Um, why, don't, why don't you, you can be my coach, okay, or pretend to be my coach. So come stand here. I'm the player, so, and she's, she knows the format, so she says, step one, John, I want you to put over there an image and a soundtrack of yourself in some state, either a state that you get to so fast that you don't even know you're in route, you just find yourself there, or a state where it creeps, it's a creep factor, and over a long period of time, Changes occur, but they're so small, incremental, you don't notice them, and then suddenly one day you wake up and you're in this other thing. How do I look that awkward? So now her job, after instructing me, reminding me what the task is, is to watch, calibrate. Can I, does she have indications that I can see myself over there? She could ask, are there colors? Name a couple colors you see. Oh, okay, green, dark brown. <coughs> um, soundtrack, are there other voices or sounds from the, from the street? Is this a quiet and people that play? So she can ask, process questions without in any way intruding upon or inviting me to <coughs> disclose the contest. This is part of her job. And, of course, she's looking for a separation. If she sees me doing something here, which she guesses might be a reflection of what's over there, she'll go shake it off, pick it up, turn away. Glance, <coughs> glance, glance. And so if she sees I can now face it without going into the posture, which obviously is over there. So first step, select the state. I gave you the criteria before the break. Put a visual military representation of that state, not a context, a state, a specific way in which I look and sound uh, if I'm in a rage. So I can see it. And he's over there. So a separation. <coughs> now, this is sort of special place. This is, this is the sanctuary here. If you want to stock it with specific resources, resiliency, <coughs> acuity, flexibility, whatever. It's sort of like stacking resources in a third. You've done this exercise. So use the same process. Stack stuff here if you need it. Most of you are just establishing it calling it sanctuary would be enough to make you Teflon. Stuff from over there bounces off and it doesn't touch you. Now, everything's now set up. We have two locations. We have the images and sounds of the state that I do not want to go into unless I actually choose to go into it. Unless we're not, I'm, I'm not giving up the competency to be in a rage or stress, whatever. The quick version or the slow version. But I don't want to go in there unless I deliberately make a choice to do that. So don't give the choices up. We're going to contextualize and we're going to introduce choice into the sequence. So she says, can you see it? And she asks it. Blah, 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 blah. And I go, yeah, she's satisfied. She goes, okay, John, s carefully step out of your sanctuary. <coughs> Shed the Teflon shields that you've been <coughs> enjoying over there. And what I want you to do now is get you Fix your eyes on that crazy guy over there. Listen to what he sounds like and how he's moving, gesticulations. What a strange guy. And I want you to now move with good body sensibility. I want you to start moving very, very slowly, about like this. I want you to slowly move toward keeping your eye fixed and your attention on totally on this guy over here. The one who looks like you, except he's in this crazy state. Right. Now, at some point in this movement, I'll feel the first touch of what belongs over there. Maybe there's a tightening of the, of the stomach muscles. Maybe it's a hunching forward of the shoulders. Maybe it's my finger coming out to start the blame. Maybe it's fist. But who knows what it is? As soon as I feel the first touch of the physiology that's over here, the state that's over here, I throw up my hands, turn around, dance, jump, and I land in my sanctuary. Her job is twofold. As I'm doing this slow movement, if she sees something, 
like the edge of the batter and stuff and we give her tongue. She sees something or sudden tension in the jaw or something. She sees something happen which changes my physiology, presumably, in the way that matches what's over here. She yells, run for your life, or whatever. <laughs> in any language, I'll understand. And when I hear that, jump up, throat, shake, jump in. And her job now, is he clean? Did he shake it off enough so that when he made the jump and landed in his sanctuary, is he back in the physiology that he was in here before he started his approach? And the breathing is important. And the breathing is critical. So one of the key points of calibration is, what's my breathing pattern here? What's my breathing pattern? It should be pretty similar. And then if my breathing pattern changes here, suddenly it goes from diaphragmatic to high, shallow, or increases in frequency, that's one of the, she goes, run for your life. Throw it out, throw it out, land here. Three times. Three times. Three times. And that's it. Three times the approach only? The approach. Okay. Yeah, and jump back in, clean. In the same context? In the, the, in, there's no context. That's a state. This is a sanctuary. The same state. Stay with the same state. What I'm building is called, electricians call a shunt. That is, the initial sensations in my body, which will ultimately, historically, have led to this state, fully expressed, become the trigger for a withdrawal, a shake off, and a landing in Teflon land, in sanctuary. And in fact, in the world, let's say it's stress. And so as I'm creeping up here, I feel that first tightening in my jaw or a metallic taste in my mouth, which is associated with stress. That's the first thing that I notice. Da -da -da -da, sh -sh, land here. So in the real world, after you do this three times, under good supervision, good self-calibration, calibration by your mate, then in the real world, when I first start to go into stress, I'll actually feel a movement backwards, a shift in my breathing. If you were present, you'd be able to verify I'm going to the physiology of sanctuary. I do not collapse into this. <coughs> now, let's take the rage example. I'll be right there. I still want to be able to do rage. I mean, there are places and times where I think rage is exactly the right response. Mm -hmm. Now, be careful where you do it, but it's, it's a really useful one to have. <coughs> so if I find, if I use rage, and I've now set this shunt up. I've done it three times. So every time the first sensations of my body of rage begin, it's like tightening in the jaw. I change my breathing, and I go to another posture, another physiology. I'm in sanctuary. From here, and notice, I've not committed to any particular response. I've interrupted the automatic that I wanted to escape. Now I'm in choice land. OK. What will I, how will I choose to, do, and this is where your consultant can be your resource. This is where you could manipulate your physiology into a high performance state and not know, but step in and you'll do something different. Okay. And it also includes, I choose rage. I decide this is exactly a situation where rage is called for to interrupt what else is going on. Friends being attacked. There are five guys, I'm just one. But if I go into a genuine rage state and I'm crazy in my approach, they'll scatter. So it's an example. It's an unlikely example to occur here in Croydon as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at any rate, notice you don't give the original state up as a choice. But you have to choose it out of sanctuary. So you maintain your choices. There may be some point in, in your experience where that's exactly what you need as a state. Okay?